CBD um, is not only safe, but uh, effective. And I think that that's important. But when it comes to your products, really talk about how they're made, um, the, the quality of the ingredients, um, and, and really um, don't go into um, the medical conditions that it can uh, address or treat, but rather highlight uh, actual user testimonials. Now you could do this through video and interviewing them, and that's uh, some of the work that we do for the brands, or through the reviews. And certainly, uh, you're not paying as a company those um, consumers for their testimonials, and that's where they can actually share how it impacted their life and how they used it and the outcomes they've had. And that is compliant because you're not putting that into your paid marketing. Right. And yeah, messaging from outside sources is okay because it's basically reporting on those. And then what about their ads? I mean, they have the choice between sponsored content and, and going that direction. And obviously they have to be very careful when they do that. But in terms of advertising and reach, what else do you tell them about getting the word out to consumers uh, or new audiences? Right. Well, we've seen many different ways. There are some uh, CBD companies that they tend to be a little bigger, but they'll hire a celebrity endorser or a brand ambassador that uh, aligns with their brand. And they will leverage that uh, ambassador's own influencer network to push out um, ads and offers of the products. Um, there, there are other ways of doing it where you can create your own events. Um, obviously now it would be more virtual, but you know, when we're back to normalcy, there's events that you can create um, in the communities that will bring uh, people that are interested. Uh, also social media. It's very important that you build out uh, your social media and um, your Get, you're putting out content that is interesting uh, for, for an audience. And then there's affiliate uh, marketing. You know, affiliate marketing is um, as old as the internet and uh, it u utilizes private sites and networks and databases to uh, put out advertising. And uh, you're not reliant when you're doing affiliate marketing on national platforms like Google and Facebook that sometimes restrict those advertising. Um, and so affiliate marketing is very effective in this, in this industry. It's something that we can offer, but it's generally used throughout the CBD industry. And you can tell when a, when a brand is using affiliate marketing, when you go to their website, generally when you scroll down to the very bottom of the site, the footer, you will see links there like about us and so forth. And they will have a link to their affiliate program. Right. And then, of course, the outlets can share in the revenue of that as well, which is good. And these things sort of follow people around the web. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter if they're if they've clicked off the page as long as they had clicked on it at least once when they go back. It, I've, I've always found affiliate marketing to be a fascinating science. Actually, it's a little bit more above my pay grade, the technology of it, but it's pretty interesting. And you mentioned technology, and that's really what makes it work. Um, affiliate marketing and a lot of the, the, the new marketing around CBD is what I call pay for performance, performance-based marketing. Right. And what that means is you're, you're really only paying when an order is converted, a commission, if you will. And so um, there's software and technology that will monitor all of the affiliate sites that are um, carrying your advertising and it will the technology will measure the best performing channels and in real time move your budget to those better performing channels so it in effect optimizes um, your advertising spend so that you know you're getting the most out of it and that means converting the most orders possible on your e-commerce site Right. But going back to Cannabis Financial News, you've been reporting on so much that's happened in this industry for quite a while now. And how do you see the, the trends going in terms of the future of the cannabis industry? I mean, obviously, we're still dealing with federal prohibition of whole plant cannabis. 
And I think that there will be a lot of changes in the law in you know, the coming months, especially maybe after the election. I think a lot of people are actually running on cannabis legalization in terms of the Congress and, and senators. And I think people are a lot more open to policy change in this regard, but you still have a lot of the pushback from industries that will be impacted by cannabis legalization. But in terms of its financial future and just some of the trends that you've been able to observe through your publication, what do you think is going to happen? How do you think this is going to unfold in the future? Good question. I think there's two limiting factors right now. Well, actually three. In, and the two of them are, are kind of associated in, in the whole cannabis space. The, the first is banking. Mm. And, um, you know, because it's still federally illegal, it's very difficult for most cannabis touching companies to have normal banking. And the SAFE Act is a bill that is in Congress that would alleviate that, but it still hasn't been passed. And there are now new pushes because of the coronavirus one of the positive impacts on cannabis has been that it's become an essential service. And that's why you see many of the states that have legal programs have kept their dispensaries open. So uh, medical and recreational um, uh, consumers can, can access it. Um, and so with that, Congress, many people in Congress are pushing to get a SAFE Act passed. That would change the whole dynamic. It would allow companies to bank. It would uh, take cash out of the system, which is not safe in many regards. It would also allow bigger investment entities to come into the space. Um, the second limiting factor, obviously, is uh, more states going legal and, of course, becoming federally legal. Now, what we're seeing with corona is it's sapping the budgets of many of the states. And those states have seen uh, other states like Colorado and now Massachusetts and uh, even California um, create a lot of tax receipts from, from their program. And that's going to incentivize other states that will have TAP budgets after this corona um, is, is cycled through. And they're going to be motivated to um, either on a legislative base or a ballot base uh, bring in a legal cannabis market into their states. Um, and so the, those I, I see both of those things accelerating as we as we go through the year um, in terms of you know what's going to propel the cannabis industry to get even bigger. Yeah, and was there a third one, or is because we have the the safe banking, right? The, yes, and, the safe banking and kickstarting the economy. Yes, and really, it's either getting more states. So it almost becomes right now, I think we're um, at 12 or 13 that are legal and then 30 plus that are medical. And so the more states we can get, I think they'll become a tipping point where it'll be easier to have a federal uh, regime come in and, and make it federally legal. Yeah, and certainly the demand is there. I mean, it's it's not as if uh, politicians will risk their careers for supporting cannabis reform. <laughs> I remember the third one. The third one's the black market. So you have the okay. banking, that's got to come in. You, you need more states to go legal, and that's going to happen, especially now that these states that will be sapped, uh, their budget sapped from corona, um, fighting corona, they'll see other, they've seen other states really benefit in having programs but it's also the black market. And what that means is um, get, shutting, doing things to shut down the black market. We saw this in Canada where it took them longer to do that, but now their efforts have really um, benefited the legal cannabis uh, market there. Here, here in the United States, California, the same thing. Um, the, the governments ha initially did not take the time and resources to shut down the black market. And, and it's also incumbent on the, the brands themselves. They need to make high quality, um, co you know, low cost products, and that will get people away from the black markets and into the, the legal markets. But the governments need to help too. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, 
you know, if you think about how much money still goes into cannabis or black market drugs in general, and that's money that's leaving our economy. And with an economy that's suffering like it is right at the moment, you would think that that would be a very important objective, you know, for the Department of Justice or just in general. Yeah, it it would be nice. Um, I've actually been an advocate for legalizing all drugs um, because you you take out a lot of the danger of illicit drugs once they're regulated. And also all that money, I mean, because you're never really going to squelch the appetite for drugs in America and just not. I mean, the war on drugs has been an abysmal failure. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, you know, prohibition of cannabis, it's been said is, is one of the most egregious abuses of uh, justice there has been ever you know, the people that are still sitting in jail because of three strikes laws. Just it, it's beyond comprehension. Precisely. But, but at this point, too, I mean, you know, the, the medical science, and I think that a lot of the research that was coming out of Israel and Spain and Australia early on when the movement to legalize really started, the science is so undeniable at this point. It just seems ridiculous that it's still Schedule One at all. You know, there's just no reason for it whatsoever. So, especially especially now that we've had the opiate crisis, I think mm -hmm. there's just a confluence of events that will elevate um, the usefulness of of cannabis, given uh, that that crisis, and uh, and like you said, that more science and research is occurring, even on a federal level. Um, I think all of that's going to come together in and really um, make cannabis a, um, a, an essential part of of people's uh, options in in trying to have better health. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I actually interviewed Dr. Judy Mikovits recently, and she's a microbiologist who has worked on a number of pandemics in the past. She worked on creating plant based medicines for HIV AIDS. And she also worked on the Ebola virus through the National Institute of Health and the Cancer um, National Cancer Institute as well back in the day. And she has come right out and said cannabis is a necessary therapy during this pandemic, not only to quiet the nerves of people who are completely rattled by this entire thing and the government's response to it, but also to quiet the raging immune system when people do get infected, because this really does, um, the virus thrives in inflammation and the stress causes more inflammation. And of course, we all know cannabis addresses the stress. Right. <laughs> so, you know, there's a, there's a really good opportunity here, I would think. You know, for and and I think any any uh, any legislators that push for this, they're going to be heroes at the end of the day because I think cannabis already is saving lives, but especially now it's sort of a necessary therapy. So we'll see what happens. Of course, it's never mentioned in the in the briefings that go on every day. Right. <laughs> I think it should be, but it's not. <laughs> right. But. Also, you know, in terms of the media coverage of this, too, it really has been the media driving a lot of the changes that have happened. But in terms of the different media outlets that have been talking about cannabis for so many years, the financial reporting, I think, is really key to reaching legislators. Have you found that? Are they part of your audience, do you think? It's a great question. And yes, and when I say investors, I, I should add that it's uh, our audience is also all of the constituents, the, uh, the, the, the lawyers, the regulators, um, the uh, obviously the other business people, uh, the companies. It, it really is that. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, Fast Money, which is a, a, a popular show on CNBC, um, they regularly cover the cannabis industry. In fact, one person on that uh, show is um, is is very uh, active in cannabis, um, mm. 
and he he talks about it regularly. So it's it's 